Good afternoon and welcome to our um, first webinar on place shaping. Um, I'm delighted today to be joined by um, some of our Okana partners um, in James Rayner from uh, Urban Place Network and uh, Kathy from, from Rider Architecture. In terms of Okana itself, we're a, a global consultancy um, focusing on the built environment, um, looking at, at place shaping um, and, and um, making sure that that's pragmatic and, and economically viable. And we've got a um, network of partners around the world that we, um, that we work with um, to achieve those transformational results. So we've worked in over 24 countries, uh, sorry, worked in over 40 countries and, and are based in over 24 um, with, with currently 10 partners, although that's growing all the time and, and over uh, 1,200 people done. So I'll hand over to James now to take it forward. Thanks. Thanks, Graham. Just assuming everybody can see see the slides. Um, so I'm, I'm going to focus on sort of what is play shaping and Cathy is going to come in and talk to a, a case study. So I think um, just to sort of get over the uh, over the concept of what we're what we're talking about, play shaping um, is around that big picture understanding of play. So it's it's holistic and it's in that's that's what it's intended to be. So we look at the uh, we look at the big the big sort of um, scale, but we also um, take notice of what's happening um, at a small scale as well. Um, so what is uh, what is play shaping in terms of how it relates to other other activities? So we have um, play shaping. We see that as the sort of vision strategy, the the way that we visualize places the deep dive into understanding of place, also sort of cross-cutting across different aspects and organizations. That, that is very much at that bigger picture level. And it sits, I guess, over what we would normally um, in the design or planning world see as the sort of traditional sort of space we a lot of us work in. So the, so the sort of master planning or the architecture or the design, dealing with sort of key issues around homes and transit but also biodiversity and, and climate so that's the sort of place making component and then of course there's a the key part is this place place stewardship which is around how we manage places once they've been designed so that's a sort of life cycle aspect the place shaping is very much that first point that first sort of step into imagining what a place might be in the in the future so what are some of the key components of uh, play shaping? Well, one of, one of the key things that we're always interested in is what communities are about. What, it, what is the place from a community perspective? So that pride of place, the prosperity of a place, does a place have a sense of purpose? And then related to that, the sort of other, other components that are really key to how a place might function successfully. So any demographic and so social shifts, the economical and sort of functional trends of a place, the quality of the place, you know, the quality um, and condition of a place. And then also importantly, how resilient it is in terms of climate change and also how sustainable it is as well in the in the long term. So the interweaved with that when we're sort of looking at play shaping strategies other core components are around uh, leadership and the strength of leadership in terms of taking a place forward and also the ability to think across boundaries so or a key part of successful play shaping is that sort of cross cutting so we we tend to think about how we can join across different people and different organizations sort of joining joining the dots so the place shaping approach brings all of those sort of uh, layers together and what we're trying to do is add a filter to, to that in terms of um, the visioning for a place its visualization how we engage with the people of a, of the of the place the, its community 
how we look at sort of catalysts from that big picture point of view and how we importantly attract investment. So this this is this guides a sort of route map um, into the into the future of what a place could could be. And I think it's important that from a place shaping perspective, we're always looking at that wider picture. So sometimes, you know, a bigger picture is needed. And whilst lots of problems are sort of and challenges are framed to a specific locality, it's important to have a fresh perspective and sort of think about how that place sits in a, in a bigger context and then consider what in that bigger context, how that place actually functions and what that bigger picture might mean for that place. And we, when we're looking at place shaping, place shaping strategy and outcomes, we're always thinking across scales. So it's very important that we have a bottom view, but uh, a view of how things are working really well at, the, at a small scale, but also that top down thinking as well. And what we're looking to do is produce strategies that uh, have a very robust future outcomes perspective but are also bedded into the locality as well. So we can pick out different actions and know how they will play through the longer, the longer term. So the, so the purpose of place shaping it is outcome driven. So we want to make sure that in producing place shaping strategies, that bigger picture point of view, it's sort of focused on better lives, it's focused on, on better environment. And it takes that sort of long view, that sort of future perspective and brings it back into what what might be actions of today that are very uh, that are very uh, part of what a place might become in the in the future. So I'm now going to hand over to um, oh, I'm quickly going to talk through some of the key themes that place shaping that are particularly interest to, to our perspective on place shaping. So green infrastructure. So we, we think this is a really important um, theme um, in place shaping strategies. Quite often we talk about economics, we talk about around transit, but we want to we want to sort of broaden that out in terms of green infrastructure. So if we see a city or a place from a green perspective, how does that impact on the economy? How does that impact on transit? How does that impact on urban health? Um, on the health and well-being, this is very much about um, the quality of people's day-to-day -day lives and how they and how they are at the moment, but how we might improve those into the into the future. So we look at health met metrics to see and understand what that might what might we need to change in terms of the quality of the place, and then net zero. Um, the, we're very interested in um, places transitioning towards net net zero so this is how private and public organizations may are making that transition and how they are how they become actionable in the actual physical environment as well and a key part of that is is having a bigger picture and we're always interested in new ideas and new perspectives about how we can shape um, places into the into the future and what what's going to contribute to that to that to that better future so we're always listening and looking and looking for the the correct ideas to embed those into play shaping strategies and that might be from a big picture point of view but it also might be something very intrinsic to a local to a local place so I'm now going to hand over to my uh, colleague uh, Kathy she's going to talk around one of the case studies that um, that will Give you a very good example of what we mean by place shaping when it's when it's in action. So, Kathy, over over to you. Thanks, James. Hi, everyone. So, I'm going to talk um, today about Liverpool Green Lanes, which Akana and Ryder have been working on for the past eighteen months or so, um, and it really sort of demonstrates our approach to place shaping in the real world. So just to summarise some of the key place shaping elements um, of Green Lanes. So this is really happening at a, an early stage. So it started out as a research paper, uh, which we presented at the International Healthy City Design uh, Conference in October last year. And rather than being a project in the usual sense with a client um, and a start and an end point, it's, it's much more of a proposition which needs to be evolved with the help of others. So it's about bringing people together around a shared mission, in this case about improving health inequalities in Liverpool. 
and it's very much around understanding place and people. So it's a combination of research using evidence and data alongside engagement and community participation. We're also trying to understand what other places are doing, so what works well elsewhere, um, how can we apply best practice and guidance to Liverpool Green Lanes. And it's very much about taking a strategic cross-cutting approach, so looking at how Green Lanes can really add value by joining up some of those existing and forthcoming projects and partners, whilst also acknowledging the importance of starting small with pilot projects to sort of start to test this approach. So, just that point around understanding place and people. Um, so just to give a bit of a background, we um, on Liverpool Green Lanes, we used available data at the start of the project to understand what the strengths and challenges are, which we would like to address. So this started with publicly available demographic and health data, which gave us a really broad picture of some of the challenges facing Liverpool City, particularly around deprivation and health outcomes and the links between these. And this is something that the council and the city region are already looking at um, and monitoring through their uh, Liverpool Marmot Partnership Group. So to map this spatially, this starts to demonstrate how Liverpool City Centre is edged by communities that display some of those inequalities across several social metrics. So based on that knowledge around those challenges, our starting point was really to think about um, how can we extend the influence of large scale regeneration projects within cities to make sure that those benefits really spread out and, and sort of benefit the, um, those other communities as well uh, outside the immediate boundary. So in Liverpool, we started to uh, look at Liverpool Knowledge Quarter, which is a significant area of the city centre. And it includes universities, hospitals, research and commercial uses. So we identified a corridor through the city um, which would connect the knowledge quarter with the waterfront. Um, and we felt that this um, sort of route started to offer some opportunities to reimagine, to transform places along there to provide greater health, social, economic and environmental benefits. And we really wanted to explore the idea of um, creating green routes and nodes which can connect and activate. And by doing this, we can help amplify the positive impacts um, of initiatives like the Knowledge Quarter to try and improve wider health um, and livability within the city. So it's this idea of self-seed and plant growth, um, a walkable and green activated central stem, which branches out and connects communities within the city. And the idea is really that these become almost self-generating, so it's sustainable as a model. We started mapping uh, where some of these interventions might be located at key points along the route, but just to say that this is very much um, a starting point. And we see green lanes as a way to connect um, lots of different elements. So thinking about health and well-being, biodiversity and habitat, transport and movement and economy. And really, these illustrations are intended just as a tool um, to really provoke an art of the possible debate within the city. And importantly, we don't see this as solely a public realm and landscape project. It's much more about working with partners to understand what those possibilities are. So bringing a cross section of actors to, this, to the discussion is um, central to Green Lanes. And it's really that holistic approach that James mentioned earlier. So across the public, private, voluntary sector, and this engagement is ongoing with the aim of trying to deepen the involvement of some of those key authorities and influences. So this really started back with um, the presentation and panel discussion um, and also an interactive model at the Healthy City Design Conference last year, which was an invitation to a spectrum of stakeholders to, um, to participate. And the level of interest generated by, um, by this at the conference was, was fantastic um, and was sort of recognised with um, an award for the most innovative idea as well at the conference. And then earlier this year, um, we hosted a workshop which um, really tried to strengthen existing relationships, um, help form new connections and enable the participants to shape the direction of Green Lanes. And that was focusing on community impact and engagement, on health, economic impact and funding and connectivity and movement. So we're also engaging with local schools. Um, so we've actually got a colleague uh, over in Liverpool today who's doing a session with pupils to explore how they experience their local environment and how they might design new spaces. 
And we're hoping to broaden this engagement to uh, local residents, to community groups and stakeholders over the next year if we're successful on a collaborative funding opportunity with Groundswell. And this would build on Groundswell's research um, that we've been working with them on into the role of urban uh, green and blue spaces and their impact on health inequalities within Liverpool. Similarly, uh, we've been working with Yemi Tech and their data mapping within the Green Lane study area, which is helping um, to, to inform really kind of where and what interventions Green Lane should prioritise. Also um, key to this strategic approach is understanding the various uh, plans and strategies, forthcoming developments within Liverpool. So looking at how these can support and inform green lanes. And then along with this strategic approach, as James mentioned earlier, starting small is also uh, really important within this process. So it's those pilot projects to start to test the approach, keep the momentum and act as a catalyst for larger projects. Learning from approaches um, to place shape and elsewhere is really important, as well as looking at how we can apply green lanes as an approach in other locations. So, for example, Engage Liverpool's events hosted um, along the Green Lanes route are focusing on learning from other European green capital cities. We've looked at Liverpool's ranking on the World Best Cities Index. And we've been learning from other global cities which are promoting the importance of green infrastructure. Also looking at uh, what we can learn from other global cities approach to knowledge quarters and innovation districts. And then we want to ensure that Green Lanes is informed by best practice. Um, so we've engaged with the World Health Organization to understand their strategic approach to urban health. So there's really an opportunity for Green Lanes to be an international platform for best practice. And then just in terms of next steps, um, we are hosting a Green Lanes workshop at the Healthy City Design Conference next month to engage with a wider audience on the potential benefits of Green Lanes as an approach and also hopefully how to make it a reality. OK, um, so that's it from me. I'll just hand back to everyone else um, and we can open up uh, the discussion. Thanks. Brilliant. Thank you, Cathy uh, and James. That, that was fantastic. Um, I wondered if I could ask you in turn, maybe James first and then uh, and then Cathy. But James, in terms of wrapping up uh, the sort of lessons or the, or the things that we want to tell the audience from what we've just shown, what, what would you think the key sort of points would be? I think the uh, the main main sort of lessons from um, the sort of green lanes are Firstly, the sort of the the idea of um, a bigger perspective and using that to stimulate a discussion. And very much, it's I think one of the key things is that play shaping is a journey, it's a process. So we we sort of frame a big idea, and then we use that to basically um, cross cut from different organisations and bring them together in what we hope to be. Um, uh, a sort of shared a shared direction so i think that's one of the things that uh, green lanes liverpool has sort of been a great example of is that we framed we framed an idea mainly because we wanted to provoke a discussion and it could have been one of several things but we know green infrastructure is really important but it it acted as that point of um discussion and enabled us to sort of dr bring different parties to the table that wouldn't necessarily have spoken together before or might have spoken in a different way about something much more focused. So I think that's the, that, that's what we try to do with with um, with play shaping approaches. Brilliant. Thank you, Cathy. Have you got uh, anything to add there as well? Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with all of that. I think sort of capturing multiple stakeholder viewpoints is really important and um, sort of knowledge sharing across silos, as, as James said, um, people who wouldn't necessarily normally be in the room together. Um, and I think, you know, one some of the kind of key takeaways um, from the conference and from the whole process really has been community wisdom is kind of really central to that. And we really need to kind of draw on that to make sure that it is sort of rooted in place and people and what communities need um, in Liverpool's sort of sense of place and identity identity but also in order to kind of respond to that um uh, sort of mission that, that that everybody's um kind of coalescing around um and i think the other thing is just 
good communication being really at the heart of the process and and that's um that extends to kind of the way that we're you know starting to use kind of visuals and illustrations but really just as a kind of starting point um to kind of stimulate that discussion so trying to make sure that nothing looks too kind of um finished or complete um and that that everybody has a chance to sort of participate and and shape that process brilliant thank you and you touched on it a little bit, but could you replicate the, the sort of, it strikes me that you could sort of replicate the, the Green Lanes approach in any in any sort of city. Obviously, there'll be nuances to where they are, but um, could you could you replicate it in, in pretty much any city around the world? I think, I think it's a really good, that's a really good point because I think, you know, one, one of the sort of core core ideas behind Green Lanes is, is, is the sort of, you know, it's a process of sort of um, learning but it's also a process of identifying uh, how we might apply it to it to other places. So there's quite a few components that we can uh, we can take we can take forward. And once again, you know, the the idea is always to provoke provoke that discussion. So we would probably do it differently in different cities, but the sort of core premise of say the impact of green infrastructure on urban health economy. Um, how different organisations work together is very, very applicable. Whether it's a whether it's a sort of mature city or whether it's an emerging city, so we're we're looking at different um, possibilities at the moment. We're hoping that obviously um, the involvement with WHO is going to help us sort of give us a bit more of a platform to take some of those ideas ideas forward. But we we would say, for instance, in the in the UK. Um, you know, you could look at first tier cities and there's probably ongoing discussions. They're quite they're already sort of taking some of these green measures and ideas forward. But if we were to look at, say, second and third tier cities where they're all competing for different sort of resources, maybe in a similar way, we could use the sort of green lanes discussion to dig a little dip, bit deeper into what the particular assets of a place is and how you might frame that in a longer term green lanes vision. So I think there's there's lots of uh, lots of opportunity out there and we're we're sort of keen to sort of hear from people who are sort of interested in having those um, those conversations. Brilliant. I th I think it it leads into the question from from the audience around and if there are any other questions from from people listening please do drop them in the comments. Um uh, we've been asked how engaged have local authorities been in this approach. Cathy, I don't know whether you want to touch on that from, from a local Green Lanes perspective. Yeah, so I think um, the the sort of city council um, have been sort of engaged from the start in terms of the conference and, and kind of one of the councillors who's involved in the Marmot Action Partnership Group around kind of health inequalities was part of the panel. I think, um, and I guess this ties into um, one of the kind of challenges around this type of project is that it's, it's all kind of self-funded at the minute. So in some ways it is constrained by obviously kind of time and resources across sort of all partners and um and people involved so i think it would be great to kind of to start to um to engage further really with with the council the city region um and and other stakeholders as we kind of move it forward bro james in in your part of the presentation you talked about place shaping place making and then place stewardship and it i'd i'd love you to sort of pick up on that a little bit more and just talk around you know those those differences, but the, how it how it interlinks. So how place shaping and place stewardship are, are kind of are kind of interlinked yeah, within that. I think I think that's that's really important, Graham. So I think you know no, none of it none of it should be undertaken in in uh, in silos. So I think the the uh, the teams that we deal with, you know, who are involved in the sort of place shaping, have that have that sort of holistic perspective, and they've all been involved across all of those different different stages. So I think I've just noticed a, a, um, a comment um, from uh, Kavan around um, the sort of maintenance aspect. So just picking that in terms of place stewardship, when we're thinking about, when, it, when we talk about big picture, it often seems like we're very, very divorced from sort of reality. But I think some of the aspects of the big picture thinking are also just imagining how 
those things can take can take shape at very very small scale and we we really like the idea of um, the impact of catalysts but catalysts that are achievable doable can be maintained but can also um, be part of that bigger picture so we don't do we don't do say a public realm scheme without knowing how it's going to build into a long-term economic impact or the prosperity or the urban health aspects so it's important when we're thinking from the big picture that we can identify which which pieces or ingredients of a place will be the best way of focusing and channeling investment and resources to drive uh, a bigger picture strategy forward so i think that's what we've what we've been trying to do in liverpool green lanes and we're working at both those levels at the same at the same time so very much the sort of materials and maintenance stewardship aspects are always in the back of our minds in terms of this sort of big picture thinking brilliant i suppose that then leads into the sort of need certainly in the uk around you know every local authority and um, being sort of putting forward this local this idea of a local growth plan and 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 feeding through into the built environment from there it's it strikes me that place shaping place making has a huge um part to play in sort of really dictating um how cities can I, can grow I, I i agree and i think it's doing it it's i think part of the the work that we've been doing is also just leaning into the the rich the rich sources of data so you would have seen in the, in as kathy spoke through liverpool green lanes that we're we're tapping into some real intelligence around what communities communities are and there's a lot of good information out there but it's also how you distill that and pull out the nuggets of information that bring a place to life so when we when we look at big picture we also thinking about it in a very nuanced way because we're very aware that you can you can speak to big picture matters and they all sound very similar so most local authorities will have a grain a, a growth plan uh, a net zero transition plan but what we're looking at are what are the particular assets of a place the particular qualities of a place the co particular sort of community challenges and interests of a place that are, that are very bespoke um to that area and how we can lean into those from from that that bigger picture picture perspective so that's what we're doing in in liverpool so we've been quite granular at the same at the same time kathy did you think, want to feed into that yeah i think as well just thinking about sort of growth plans and, and how kind of place shaping can support that I think that engagement process and that setting objectives right at the start that can then always be referred back to almost as the kind of key success criteria and um, that really helps with that sort of um, setting goals and um, but also that evaluation but I think there's something interesting linking into the place stewardship piece around then the ability to actually be able to kind of respond to that and modify things in in kind of in real time almost um, and then I think again that kind of links back to James's point around the importance of sort of data and, and using that evidence so you've got that baseline that you can then um, sort of measure and, and monitor against um, and similarly along kind of alongside sort of net zero can we support councils to, to kind of deliver on some of those um, plans and strategies and I think another benefit of kind of the approach that we've taken on green lanes is around sort of partnerships. So with that approach, there's there's perhaps kind of greater ability to then be able to set up the kind of governance or ongoing um, sort of delivery structures to look after places. And um, I think the challenge, as people are alluding to, is the kind of revenue funding to be able to do that. But again, I think that kind of collaborative working might also offer opportunities to create sort of more commit. Um, sort of sustainable commercial models as well um, and yeah I think it just comes back to that that point again around sort of the value which is added through joining all of those projects up and through those improved outcomes whether it's around sort of health and well-being um, and you know maybe the cost savings um, linked to that is there a mechanism there where those savings can then be kind of ploughed back into looking after a place and the people to ensure th that it continues to bring those benefits um, and can that funding be used to sort of catalyze other projects in other places as well so yeah more questions there I think as well <laughs> I think it's great and I think it, it it touches again on on Kevin's point around 
it, what I think he's talking about is this kind of holistic view of this in the sense of, you know, you need to the deliverability or the economic viability of a um, a, a place shaping scheme and then a master plan and then, you know, actual buildings to increase the value. It's that kind of cyclical approach that we need to start thinking about a bit more maybe within within this. And, and I suppose Kev, Kevin's point or, or question is really about how is that how's that transcend or how's that working? Um, in in reality, in terms of if we take Liverpool as an example, all right, we're putting these the idea of all of these catalysts, but what's what's the next steps to get to actually delivering um, some some buildings and some projects on that? Kathy, do you want to go? Yeah, just searching for the mute button. Um, yeah, I think I think that is the challenge. So again, just you know the fact that this work has been kind of self-generated and it's very much in the, those kind of early stages but there has to be an economic strategy to underpin the project to sort of demonstrate those benefits um, and make the case for how kind of individual projects within that could be funded and, and I think kind of working with the um, the sort of stakeholders and partners that we've already been working with um, and, and kind of broadening that network will be key to that to understand where the opportunities are. Um, I think the ability to kind of develop sort of future funding applications as well. Um, and then I guess it, it kind of comes down to, you know, thinking about those pilot projects, those those projects that will be a bit of a catalyst. Um, you know, we're, we're started to talk to um, Liverpool One and United Utilities around possibilities to kind of um, to, to sort of trial ways uh, to improve kind of public realm and the experience of, of certain places within the city but at the same time um, improve uh, things like around kind of suds and drainage and um, sort of urban heat island effect so I guess within that we will then be starting to think about kind of the, the sort of longer term benefits and um, sort of maintenance of that. But mm -hmm. to be perfectly honest, we kind of aren't at sort of that level of detail yet. But I think it's really important to be thinking about it now. Yeah, I mean, I think that's. I mean, we've teamed up with uh, with Groundswell, and part of their part of their work is going to um, to be looking at the sort of at I hate the term KPIs, but is looking at you know how how those how those sort of actions relate to for instance you know um changes in in uh, in urban health so improvement in urban health and i think the other the other sort of two other points i think that are really important to to make so when we when we start the play shaping sort of process it, it is a process and the process is as important in fact it's probably more important than an actual outcome in terms of say a document or something like that so the process itself bringing people together this sort of cross-cutting discussions that we can have is the way of filtering probably a lot of noise out and getting people to sort of um, come to a sort of shared place as well and the other I think the other important thing underpinning this sort of approach is that we want to leverage off the idea of sort of shared risk with a longer term perspective. So we know that, for instance, public authorities quite often, they have the asset, they don't have the revenue, they don't necessarily have the investment, but on the private side, potentially, they have deeper, deeper pockets, but they don't necessarily have the asset. So we're trying to sort of frame things around where there's a there's a degree of sort of shared risk that can help move some of these ideas ideas forward, but always sort of framing that in terms of a a longer a longer perspective, because I think <clears throat> that's what's really needed to um, to sort of deliver some of the urban health outcomes, the sustainability, energy transition, you know, net zero transition into the into the longer into the longer term. And just to answer the question in the in the chat, I think it. I mean, the work. Um, is about informing decision making, um, whether it be a planning authority or whether it be a group of uh, institutions. So we're also at the same time interested in talking to institutional um, investors, um, pension funds, impact investors, um, down to sort of local businesses and community action groups as well. But the idea is to always use uh, the, the the play shaping thread and it could be you know for instance in, in liverpool we've used green lanes 
but it could be another thread that we use to to sort of join the join those links up but frame it in a different way because we like we like the perspective of saying how does our place fit into that into that bigger global picture because that ultimately that's what we that's what we need to be we need need to be asking but what 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 are the sort of also the unique local qualities of a place that could be celebrated rather than the same things that might be that might where you might be end up competing with your neighbors so trying to apply, apply a filter um, is is really important as well brilliant thanks guys i think we'll um there's no other questions so we'll we'll start to wrap up um i just wondered if you had any um last uh take home messages i think the one for me that james you've just got alluded to is the idea of of more joined up thinking and the process of actually joining that thinking up um because it strikes me that we do often sort of build in lots of different silos um across the city and actually if we could join a lot of that up with a with a process of, of engagement um we might actually be in a be better place but james i didn't know if you had any final take home messages i think um well i think it's the the sort of place shaping that um, we're thinking about in terms of okana is is how we how we bring a slightly out of the box perspective or piece of thresh thinking that can be used to stimulate and provoke uh, a discussion that might not be happening but is, is but would be very useful to have and using that to bring to bring different parties uh and interests together so i think you know that's what we're that's what we're really interested in and i think okana is sort of well placed because we we have that holistic sort of set of set of skills so we're and we're always up for having a uh, a conversation um at the very beginning at, at the beginning of a journey so we're we're interesting in sort of sharing ideas and perspectives so i think that would be my that's probably my round my round up brilliant and kathy i'll leave the final words to you just in in terms of that any any final thoughts thanks yeah i think um for me it's around that kind of combination of understanding the data about a place alongside people's lived experience mm -hmm. and and how that sort of maps across um and i think as well the point that james made around understanding um different stakeholders whether that's sort of pub public or private um the the sort of risks and opportunities that that might be um kind of apparent or available to to, to all of those different parties brilliant thanks guys and thanks for thanks for the listening as well that was that was really really brilliant thanks very much right thanks everyone thank you thanks